Hey everyone, welcome back to CIS 39. Today we are going to be covering lesson number 15, which is uh, the mesh toolset and retopology uh, in Maya. So what is retopology? Retopology is when you have a high-res version of a model that you sculpted a bunch of detail on, but you don't have a corresponding low-poly model to transfer the normal map data to to use in a video game. So, for example, um, we have the frog model that we used a long time ago, and I'm going to go ahead and just move over here to lesson 15. So these are all the steps for what I'm about to do today. So the first thing I want to get is uh, from lesson number three, I want to get that high-res version of the frog that we used in that lesson. And that's located right here. And I'm going to need to make a new project and download that into the project scenes folder. So let's go back over to Maya and make a new project. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to put this right on top of my computer's desktop. And tracing and retopology refer to the same thing. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and download this <clears throat> by right clicking and then choose save link as and go to the desktop look for your tracing project file uh, folder that you created of course you might want to put it somewhere else you don't have to put it on your desktop and save that into the scenes folder <clears throat> all right let's go ahead and open that up and there's our buddy admiral akbar from star wars all right so, um, as you can see, I have the polygon count turned on up here. This is a very, very dense model. It's 2,700,000 or how much is it? 274,000 polygons. So that's really high polygon count. So for a video game, just to keep in mind uh, that performance is an issue and that usually you want that try count to be for any particular character model. You don't want it to be higher than, say, 500, 800, 1,000 at the most. Uh, so this model came from a template. And so there is no corresponding low poly version of it. So um, I would open up Mudbox and show you guys that, but I'm afraid it's going to cause my CPU to crash. So um, this is it to, behind the scenes, this is actually the third time I've done this video. The last time I did it, my CPU was maxing out at 90% because of the recording software. So anyways, cross my fingers, knock on wood, that it doesn't do that again. All right, so anyways, um, going back to the idea of tracing. So we want to create a low poly version of this that we can use to bake a normal map onto. All right, so first things to notice is that uh, this is a really bumpy model. It's because this is, for whatever reason, uh, all set to be hard edges. So we want those to be soft edges. So in your modeling menu set under mesh display, make sure you soften all those edges up. All right, next, <clears throat> it's going to be kind of hard to look at with this white material on it. So we're going to assign a new material to it by going to the rendering menu set, lighting and shading, and then assign a new material and assign a new blend material to it. All right, that just makes it so it's easier to look at. And then under your renderer, make sure that you have it set to viewport 2.0. Okay, yeah, it's still a little laggy right now. And then for uh, the user interface, make sure that you have this box open so that you can select stuff. So for example, we're not gonna use the eyes, you can delete the eyes. And then um, you might need to press Control A. If your computer looks like this, press Control A so that you can see inside the attribute editor. Um, you can also just click here where it says attribute editor to open up the attribute editor and we want to find eventually where that material is at so to get rid of all this extra stuff we're going to delete the construction history and there's the material that we just added the blend material so we'll need to have access to that later but for now i'm going to press Control a to put it back to the channel box and what we're going to do is turn this into what's called a live surface Think of a live surface as like it's magnetized so that when we go to do tools, everything will, or when we go to use the modeling toolkit, um, the tool will snap things onto the surface and we can trace off of it. So to do that, we need to uh, convert this into a different type of object. Instead of a polygon mesh, we need to convert this into what's called an alembic model. Um, so to do that, you're going to go to cache, GPU cache, and then export selection options. And then yours will probably set to sign slider, set it to current frame instead, and export. <clears throat> Go ahead and just give it a name like Toad. Make sure the file type is set to Alembic. 
and export. All right, we don't need this guy anymore, so we're going to delete him. <clears throat> and we're going to import the Alembic file that we just created by going back to GPU cache, import. There's the file we just created. Click on import. And now we have our Alembic version of the frog. Notice that there's a little lightning bolt next to it. And they put that on there because uh, the, the vertex data is now on the graphics card on your computer instead of the RAM. So the RAM is much slower at drawing things compared to the graphics card. All right, next we need to make this a live surface by clicking on this little horseshoe. And you should see that it now says Toad. Okay, so this is all set to be traced off of to make a low poly version of our model. So next we need the modeling toolkit and you can get that by going back to modeling. And then under mesh tools, it should be right at the top. It should say show, mine says hide because I already opened it. But yours should say show modeling toolkit. Just click on that. And then that should open up this window right here. <clears throat> the tool that we are using today is the one at the bottom called Quad Draw. And what Quad Draw does is it literally allows you to draw quads on the surface of something that is live. So, for example, if I click, it'll drop these little points on top of the frog. And then if I point to the middle of the four uh, dots and press Shift, you can see it gives me a preview of where it would create a surface. All I do now is left click, and that's it. I have a, a, a quad on top of that surface. And you can see that it will put those dots wherever uh, wherever you click. So if I click here, I'm going to click on a couple different spots. You can see, if I zoom in, that those are all sitting right on top of the surface of the toad. All right. <clears throat> now, if you want to get rid of the little dots, you can scroll down to the bottom of the modeling toolkit and then click on clear dots. That will get rid of those. Now it's important to, to um, keep in mind that um, this poly surface one was created when I created this square right here. And as we add to the model, we want to make sure that we're adding to that same surface. So let me show you if I turn quad draw off and then I go back here to the toad and then I turn quad draw back on and then I'll click four times, push shift and click. Look what just happened over here. Now I have poly surface number two. So I don't want that. At the end of the day, I want all my topology to be placed into one surface. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn quad draw off and delete that extra one that just got made. <clears throat> Make sure you have this selected when you click on quad draw. And now you can see that if I click and add another square, that that gets put into the same surface. Okay, so it's really important that you don't have multiple surfaces. Okay. So that's one way to create uh, the topology. Let's go back over to the class website. Uh, let's go over and close that. So we've already done all this stuff up here. Um, we already exported to create the Alembic version of the model. And then down here is the different methods. So the first method that it mentions here is what you just saw me do, is you can place dots onto the model, hold shift, and then uh, click to create the um, Hold shift, click between the dots, and then it will create the quad for you. So that's one way to do it. Um, you can also just click on uh, two positions, like here and here, and then hold shift, and it will figure out that it you want to add it to what you're doing here. Okay, so that's, or I can click one time, and there's two edges, so I can click here and make another surface. So it's very easy to um, add quads in that way. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish off the bottom of this. Okay, Okay. there we go. Now, sometimes it can be kind of hard to see what you're doing as you uh, trace off of the model. So what, what you can do is you can use Isolate Select. You can click on the surface and then go up here to Isolate Select, which is this icon right here, and then click, and then that'll allow you to see just the mesh. So sometimes it's easier to just work with that. All right, so for big parts of the model, it's kind of easy to figure out what to do to trace off of it. I'm going to go ahead and just keep going here. And there's actually a shortcut. If you don't want to drop the two dots and then press Shift, uh, another thing you can do is you can point to an edge and then use the Tab key. You notice it changes when I push Tab, it says Extend. And then if I left click drag, it'll just extrude another edge out for me. So that's another way you can do it. So, like for the back, I could do something like this I could go here. 
create one square and then hold tab and then click Oops. same thing tab tab okay and then we can just connect these hopefully we can figure out how to connect between these two I'm pushing shift oh my computer is starting to lag shift there we go come on cpu you can do it all right now eventually you're going to end up with pieces like this where I mean you could make a quad you could click right here and then just make a quad like that um, in fact I think I'll go ahead and do that okay and then down here I'm just gonna adjust that point over like that okay, okay let's go ahead and do the arm next let's go ahead and move this one over and that's another thing that to, I didn't mention if you move an existing vertex it stays snapped to the surface is kind of cool. All right. <clears throat> Rotate. It's locking up on me. There we go. Okay, let's see what this looks like over here. Okay. So uh, I like to put a quad here. So what I could do is I could just add some points like this. Sometimes it has a hard time figuring out. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. All right, let's try this. Let's move it up higher. Let's get it out. So I'm just going to put four here. <clears throat> there we go. And let's move these down and figure out a way to tie this in with the rest of the topology. So let's go over to isolate select again. Let's see what we got. It looks like there's nothing, not any great options here. So what I could do is I could go ahead and just add an edge loop. So you can add an edge loop by holding down the control key and then uh, it will give you a preview of where it's going to add the edge loop into the model. Now as I'm looking at this, I'd actually really like to just continue this straight across and have quads down here. So I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to delete these faces here. And you can delete by pressing Control and Shift. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it in to that left. Okay, let's add another point down here. There we go. That's better. Okay, I like that better. So that's going to make it easier for me to connect this together. Okay, now I don't think I mentioned this, so I'll go ahead and mention it now. Um, you might notice that uh, when I drag one vertex over the top of another vertex, that they merge together automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and use Control and add another edge loop here. And then I can now connect these together. So watch what happens. If I drag this, it's just a little red circle. Hopefully you guys can see it. But when I drag over the top of another vertex, the, the circle changes. And that's warning me that it's about to merge the vertices together. Okay. All right, that looks good. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the arm off here. I'm going to add a little edge right there. Again, I'm just pressing Control to do that. Okay. Next, what I'm going to do is a pretty common trick. So I need to go from uh, squares to like kind of bring them together into a point in the middle. Um, and I have more edges than I actually need to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude every other edge on this using tab. Oops. And do. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to get every other edge. And then I'm going to snap these together. All right.
right? For all the places where there's a, a, a triangular opening, it will fill those in with a triangle if you push shift. <clears throat> so I'll just go my, around it. There's my shift. Okay, and lucky us, we ended up with a quad in the middle. Look at that. I should go buy a lottery ticket because it never lines up that nice with me. All right, so anyways, that's it. Oh, and it's worth mentioning. You guys, don't try to replicate exactly what I'm doing when you're doing this. It'll take you forever. You'll be like pausing the video every 10 seconds. So just, you know, to your best of your ability, you know, fill everything in. It doesn't, ha it does not have to look exactly like mine. So just make sure you keep that in mind. All right, next we're going to go ahead and do uh, the eyes, which are a little bit more complicated because there's more detail. <clears throat> also note our polygon count is only 62 right now. Is it 82 or 62? I don't have my glasses. Anyway, so our polygon count is really nice and low right now. Okay, now you don't need to go crazy on the eyes. Um, so it does kind of loop under itself. But I'm not going to worry about getting all the way to the very, very inner side of it. Oh, those went way back there. Okay, and there's one more up here. There we go. Okay, and then you're just going to fill these in. Like so. So it's a little bit of a tedious process tracing stuff, but it's, as you can see, it's not hard to do. Ah, I don't want that either. Just undid that one. There we go. Sometimes it gets confused. You press shift and then it gives you a little preview of where it's going to add it and you just can't figure things out. Sometimes you just got to keep moving the mouse around until it figures out where you want to put it. Alright, there we go. Let's see, we need to find some of it here. All right, there we go. Okay, next we are going to extrude. Actually, we could just drop points because it's going to want to. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to temporarily delete these faces down here using Control Shift. So Control Shift. Come on, there we go. Delete that one. I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to show you something else, something new. All right, what I'm going to do? You saw how you can uh, use Tab to drag out one edge by using the left mouse button. You can also use tab and the middle mouse button to drag out an entire edge loop. Okay. okay it's just gonna speed up the process a little bit, hopefully. I don't like where it put that. You know what, I'm actually gonna just drop the points into it. This is the trickiest part, by the way, because again, it's, there's so much small detail. Let's go in here, add one on the edge. There we go. And then I'm just trying to make the dots line up with where the edges are. Come on, you can figure it out. You're a smart frog. Doesn't help if my computer Wanting to respond normally. Oh, it's being difficult. Why are you being difficult, frog? What if we do this? What if we move up here first? Will that make you happy? Yes, that made you happy. There we go. Try to make your frog happy.
Yes. Let's go ahead and fill these back in now. Get the extrusion kit that we need back in. Come on. Really? You can't figure out that there's a square that's missing in here? The place where I just deleted it? There you go. All right. Okay, so next we are going to, let's see, how's this one way over here? Oh yeah, you're way out of place. Okay, then you're gonna go right around here, buddy. All right. So let's see if we can. Um, now you can see this is really, really flat part of part of his head. I mean, you can almost get away with just one square here to like capture that entire piece. Um, the problem is, is that we have to tie that in to all these smaller squares. So while it's tempting, what we're gonna end up having to do is the trick we saw me do down below on the arm. We're going to have to extrude every other edge and then start to connect things in together. So using tab, extend every other edge. No. No. You. All right, there we go, tab. And then snap these together like so. Fill those in using shift. So you can see we're now down to three edges. And I could even, if I wanted to, bring this down to one edge, or two edges, I should say. I don't want to snap together. Why are you being so mischievous, Mr. Frog? There we go. You don't want to snap on top of that one? Do you want to snap on? No. Do you want to? Yes. There you go. Yes. There you go. Good frog. All right. So. We just went from being uh, very, very dense in terms of the number of quads to just two. All right, let's go ahead and keep tracing this way through. Okay, and I'm gonna use tab plus middle mouse button to extend both at the same time. Did it get both? It did not, why did you not do both? Let's try that again. Oh, I used the left mouse button, that was my fault. Tab, middle mouse button. No, it only did one. This is making up for how lucky I got getting the arm in like one shot. Oh well, if it's gonna be difficult, I'll just do them one at a time. Who cares? One, two, and then I'll just manually snap these together. Hopefully it's not as much of a pain for you guys. So there you go, so that's how you can go from the eye out. Okay, let's keep going. Now, I'm going to scope the entire thing in just in the interest of time because it's already 22 minutes in here, and I think you guys could handle sculpting. The hardest part is the eyes, like I said. If you can get the uh, eyes, then you can get the rest of it. No problem. And then it gets kind of tricky down here, too. So let's see at the bottom. I'll do the other tricky part because once you get this done up here, it's a piece of cake. You're just taking uh, this piece and running it all the way down the back. There, now it's working. Why didn't you want to do that before, huh? Okay, now here's kind of an interesting problem. So now we got two, and we got one here. Now I could just press Control and add a new point in here, um, or I could just snap one of these down onto this one, and then connect it that way. Where are we at? Okay, so it's starting to get there. Okay. Now the same thing we did there. Now the other thing you could do here is you could actually just collapse it down that way and then delete that. Oh, it wants to do the whole loop? Okay. That looks cleaner. I agree. Good job, my buck. So you can point to, so what I did there is that you can hold control shift to delete something, but you can point to an edge and it will delete the entire edge loop. Okay. So I'm not gonna do much more here because I do wanna be able to get to show you guys how to um, export this and uh, 
create the uh, final version of it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the one that I did earlier before I started recording, just so you guys can see. So hopefully that's enough information for you guys to uh, trace in the low poly version of the model. Let me go ahead and take a look over here real quick. Um, so yeah, method two is to extrude. You saw me do that when I was pushing tab, middle mouse button to do the loop or tab and then the left click, just do one. And then um, creating a triangle. Yeah, you just you saw me doing that. You just snap the two together and then snap two vertices together to merge them to create a triangular opening and press shift to fill it in. Here's just some general strategies to sculpt the different parts. You actually just saw me do it in the video though. All right, and then here's some things you can do to uh, refine the mesh. Um, I used to do this in the past, but I, I will just tell you guys, um, don't use the relax tool. Just do it by eye and make it look good. Um, mesh delete edge vertex. And then orphan vertices. No, don't worry about doing that. Don't worry about doing that. Don't worry about moving edges. All right, yeah, so I guess you can just ignore this section right here. Just make it look good to the best of your ability. And then this is just a shortcut for the um, the different operations that I mentioned, like um, using uh, uh, shift and relax. Right? Yeah, I said not to do relax. Like control drag, you saw me do that to insert the edge loop, so just so you guys can see that. Again, just point to an edge, press control, you get a preview of where it's going to add an edge loop, and then you click and then add it. Okay. Just be careful of doing that because you don't want your polygon count to get too high. You want it to stay real low. All right, um, so let's go ahead and look at the finished version from earlier. So we can do all this crap. Create some more feet. All right. So here's one that I did earlier this morning. Okay, now a couple things to note. Um, when you're done, uh, yeah. So when you guys are done creating your uh, model, it's gonna be all hard edges. So that's something that um, you're, yeah, I didn't show you in the video. Make sure that you set the edges to soft before you go to do the next steps that I'm about to show you. So make sure that all the edges are set to soft. The other thing is you need to look for places where there may be gaps or holes or openings. And you can use any of the old school modeling tools now, there's nothing special about this uh, because it was created with quad draw. This is just a poly surface like any poly surface. So make sure you look over it, make sure there's no gaps, holes, uh, openings, that everything's nice and welded together. Okay, um, also on the mouth, um, on the detailed one, it, it forms this really, really, really thin line. Don't worry about getting that detailed with it. It's fine if you have just a little gap. Just get it as close as you can without it, it jumping over to the other side. And I guess that's something I could have shown you as well is when you're tracing, um, well, I can do it real quick right now, I guess. Um, I'll go ahead and hide him. And then isolate back off and then make you a live surface again. So I just want to show you. When you're doing the mouth, um, let's say that I have a quad here. It's real easy to accidentally jump over to the other side of the mouth when you do it. So that's why I have such a wide opening there is I, I, I try to keep it so that they're close but not so close that they're going to weld with uh, the vertices from the other side of the mouth because if I go too far in eventually it's going to want to try to snap them together and, and merge them so just keep a nice gap there between those two pieces when you're creating the, the pieces for the, the lips all right okay let's get rid of that one okay, now at this point we're actually done uh, if you have this we're actually done using the trace model because we created the low poly. So you can delete that out of your scene to simplify it so that all you have, oops, so that all you have left is the, uh, the low poly version of the model. Okay, so next I am going to create a UV map for it because right now the UVs are just garbage, random stuff. So I'm gonna go to UV, planar, and then I'm gonna just do a projection in from the X direction. See down here, there's X, so we're gonna project. Get projected in from the side. I'm gonna click on the UV editor, because we're probably gonna have to do some cleanup. Okay, so there's the projection from the side. So a couple things is we wanna make sure that it's easier to see. So make sure that we want to shade the UV so we can see that it's all nice and blue. Um, next, we are gonna use the unfold tool. Go into, uh, and you guys can't see the pop-up menu, I know. When I, I, whenever you see the mouse turn, oh, it doesn't turn into anything. Um, 
I guess I'll just have to tell you. When I, right now I'm right clicking and then I'm going to the right and it says UV and then I can select all the UVs on the model. And then I'm going to go into Tool, Smooth UV. We've done this before. Unfold it. Now I'm going to go to the Scale tool and make sure that it fits inside my 0, 1 space. Nice and clean like that. So now I have a place for all my normal map information to go to. Yay! All right, and it's worth noting that these steps are not in the step-by-step -step direction. So, all right, uh, next we need to export this over to Mudbox. Oh, um, before we do that, we need to duplicate it. All right, so we only sculpt half the frog. I guess I should have mentioned that uh, earlier, but uh, we only want to sculpt half because it's symmetric. So the next thing we need to do is create the duplicate and make sure that all the vertices on the middle are lined up cleanly. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my front view. So I can do that by pressing four view and then tapping on the space bar here on the front and then pressing A to frame all. Press five so I can see the smooth shade version of it. Next, I'm going to right click and choose vertex. I know you can't see it, but you right click and then go to the left and then just select all the vertices down the middle. Then press space bar once, press space bar again to go to this view. And then I'm going to deselect anything that got selected accidentally that is not on the border. So I'm going to hold control and then I'm going to deselect the extra vertices that I did not actually need. So I have just the ones in the middle. I'm going to tap space bar once, tap space bar again to go to front view. And I'm going to snap these to the center of the grid by opening up the move tool options. So I'm going to double click here on the move tool. Go down to uh, move snap settings and then make sure that return component spacings is turned off. It'll probably be turned on on your computer. Make sure that's turned off. Next, I'm going to press X on the keyboard. And you can see that makes the little circle right here go from a square to a circle. And then I'm just going to left drag this until it's right on top of that axis of symmetry. Okay. Good. Make sure that that didn't mess up my UVs. Probably didn't. You, you should. I should have done that before I used smooth, but I don't think it. Yeah, it's not going to have a big impact on. <clears throat> get away with it this time. But yeah, you should move it and then do your projections last. All right, we're ready to make a duplicate of this. So let's do it. So I'm going to go to object mode. So right click, choose object mode. And then next I'm going to go to Edit, Duplicate Special, Options. And I'm going to set the following options. I'm going to set Scale X to negative 1. That's going to make every vertex go from the positive X to the negative, uh, negative X. And there's my duplicated side. Worth noting that this is actually two separate surfaces, so I need to combine these together by selecting both. Use Shift to select both sides. And then here's the shortcut for combining. Now it's all one surface. However, even though it's one surface, if I go to vertex mode, you can see that it has the vertices uh, not connected, so there's a gap. So the next thing I need to do is merge all the vertices together that are along the center. So I can just come down here and then just select all the verts that are on the middle of the model, like so. And then I'm going to go to mesh or edit mesh and merge. Okay, and then it's always a good idea to just go in and check and make sure that it actually did merge the pieces together so that you don't get an opening anymore now when you open it. Okay, next I need to make those edges soft, uh, soft edges along the center. So I just double clicked on this edge loop right here to select it and then to add to the current selection you use Control plus Shift and then double click over here and then I'm going to make these soft edges. All right, and our buddy, uh, the old friend Toad, is ready, oh, well, almost ready to go over to Mudbox. So next, I uh, need to do a little bit of cleaning up. So recall that we need to freeze any transformations on it, and we need to delete the construction history on it just to be safe. And of course, all the other rules for exporting apply as well about bow ties and uh, T intersections from way back. And I think we were still in class when I went over that stuff. All right, so let's export this over to Mudbox. I'm going to go ahead and pause. And uh, while it's paused, I am just going to, well, I guess I'll show you. I'll show you. All right, so uh, we're going to export selection. 
Make sure that's set to FBX. Turn off all options except for smoothing groups and then export it. And then you, that's just me doing it earlier today. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and export the high res version of the toad. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring him back in for a second. Okay. Delete the eyes. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna temporarily hide this one by pressing Control H. H is in horse. Okay, we've got to make those edges soft again. I guess I could have created the ex the export of this earlier, but okay, fine. Right, mesh display, soft edges for Mr. Toad. Okay. And I believe he's ready for export, but just to be sure. Let's export you. Okay, next, let's go ahead and delete him again. And then press Control Shift H to bring back my low poly version. All right, next we're going to need to open up Mudbox. All right, Mudbox is open. So next we are going to open up those FBX files that we created a second ago. You're going to look for it on your project scenes folder. And I guess I should have mentioned that, uh, that you want to make sure that you save those FBX files here. Uh, why is it not looking for, why is it specifically looking for, okay, I'll use import instead of open. It's stuck on mud. Hold on, let me see what I'm doing wrong. Okay, I realized what I did wrong. Um, it was exporting to the wrong project, so this is an older, this is a, a wrong place to put them. So I'm going to go ahead and from Mudbox open them up from this different project called New Project. But for you, you guys just make sure that that you check before you go to save the FBX that you're saving it in the scenes folder for the. The project that you're currently working on. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to here and then I'm going to have to choose a different location. So instead of using my tracing project that you saw me create, I'm going to use the one that I did from earlier when I was getting ready for you guys. So I'm going to click on Toad. Okay, and that's the one that I just did a second ago and then import the high res. And it's okay if you get this message, you can just say keep all. Okay, let's get rid of the grid, let's get rid of the wireframes, and let's make a normal map. So this is kind of like bringing it all home, right? So the whole idea was that you started off with a high-res template in Mudbox. Um, they have a whole bunch that we saw. It's what the, the create. No, there we go. So these are all the different templates that come with Mudbox. Um, other modeling, 3D modeling applications have uh, way more than this, but. Anyways, the, again, the problem is that we needed to have a low poly version. So that was the whole idea behind tracing is to get to here, to where we can texture map down onto the low poly version. And of course, the low poly version has to have a normal map to contain that data. All right, so let's go ahead and make the normal map. Make texture map. No, we are not texture mapping. We want to make a normal map. High res is the source, the low poly is the target. Turn on smooth source. Change it to closest to low res mesh. Better results if you turn on anti-aliasing, but it takes longer. And then choose where you want to put it. I'm going to put it in. Source images for that tracing project. Name. Frog normal. He looks like a normal frog. All right, and then turn off the preview option and extract. And there we go. Success. All right, we don't need Mudbox anymore. We just needed it to get that 
file. So next we're gonna come over here. I'm gonna go ahead and close the modeling toolkit. We're gonna to open up the attribute editor. And I'm gonna uh, give this a new material. I'm just, uh, you guys saw me do it earlier. So you can go to rendering and then lighting. Well, I'm already here. Lighting shading. But remember, you can just right click and choose assign new material as well. So blend, we always use blend for normal maps. Down here under mapping, click on mapping button, attach file, change it to a tangent space normal, click here on the mapping button, right click on the folder, and look for that normal map. Look at that beautiful normal map that Maya made for us or Mudbox made for us. And there you go. That's how you get a nice low poly model. Now check out the polygon count on this guy. 556 compared to 200,000, right? So this is going to give us a... Well, the other one wouldn't even work in a video game. It's way too high, but this is obviously going to be within the constraints. Like I said, anything from 500 to a, a max of about 1,000 polygons per character is what you would want for your character. So that is the process of going from a high poly model down to a low poly model. So again, even though the steps aren't in there for baking the normal map, I do want you guys to do that so that you can understand the process. All right, so uh, again, that was a workflow for creating a normal map for a low poly character model. Um, going from a high poly down to a low poly. And the next lesson, we're gonna go the opposite direction, I believe. So uh, yes, so in lesson 16, we're gonna see how you can go the other direction. So. The assumption with this one is that there was a template in the high-res sculpting software to work with. But what if it's a what if it's something that's not in the software? So, for example, there was no like uh, weaponry in Mudbox. There's not like a um, there's not like a, a sword model that you can work with, or you know, uh, and there's a car model in there, but it's like a sports car. What if you want to make like a truck? Well, there's no truck in there, so you would have to actually make the low-poly version yourself. And we'll see that how to do that next class. All right. As usual, good luck if you need help with anything, guys. Don't hesitate to let me know. I hope you guys are all doing well.